here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, yeah, come, 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 come. Bitch, yeah. She's a turf. For more information or proof of this claim, please feel free to visit her Twitter. Be careful who you support. The trans rights movement loves to equate radical feminism with white women, as if by placing it squarely upon the shoulders of white women, they are now allowed to criticize it with the same fever with which they criticize homosexuality under the guise of protecting trans rights. However, to pretend that only white women are radical feminists, the form of feminism most common around the globe, is to blatantly ignore the realities of women of color around the world. The moment that a black woman speaks up about the realities that women face, the claim that they are anti-racist is disproven. Trans rights activists would prefer to speak over the voices of women with different experiences in order to continue to perpetuate the lie that trans women are the most oppressed of all, and that women are somehow oppressors on account of the misogyny we face via what they like to call cis privilege. Recently joining the ranks of the deposed feminist is a content creator named Letitia Kai. You may have seen her work before through her graphic hairstyles, which bring forth stories of women's struggles, particularly through her lens of being a woman from the Ivory Coast. She's recently written a book compiling her artwork and manifestos on topics such as sexism and internalized misogyny, racial oppression, reproductive rights and consent, harmful beauty standards, and shame and its corrosive effect on mental health. She is an amazing woman, and one that certainly deserves the attention and praise she has received. If one was looking for a black woman to rally behind to back up their claims of listening to black voices and Black Lives Matter, she fits the bill perfectly. Except, recently, she has come under fire, as most loud, unapologetic feminist women do, for not recanting her message to include trans women. It all began when people began to criticize her creations, which often center around female experiences and therefore the female form as being turfy. As you may well know, turf is the new witch. It is the new way to shut up and demonize women that you don't agree with. Except, it didn't work here. While many creators will scramble to retain their audience and avoid ostracization by apologizing and catering to the gender crowd, Letitia refused. I have the right to choose what womanhood represents for me. The only thing that makes me feel like a woman is my body, my biology, nothing else. If others want to feel like a woman for other reasons, it's up to them. Even this statement is pretty mild as far as things go. She didn't say that sex and gender are intertwined, that you cannot transition into another sex, or that trans women are not valid. All she said was that, for her, biology was the only thing that made her a woman. Take this in context of the Ivory Coast. She has made an effort to educate the wider world about the abuses and maltreatment that women there face. FGM, period stigma, breast ironing, all things that the average trans right activist will never have to face. They are free to dress how they wish and bully others into referring to them as they wish to be referred to. They can pretend that misogyny has been eradicated, like an illness that we can all but vaccinate out of existence. But Letitia lives in a world where she does not have that privilege. Sex-based oppression is rampant. It still exists. It is visceral in its violence and its reach. To say that womanhood is something that you can align with out of will instead of happenstance is to say that all of these abuses could have been avoided if those women had declared, I am a boy, before the iron was brought to their breast, or they were mutilated. Sex-based oppression does not care about how you identify. It does not care about the notions of a gendered soul unaligned with its body. It only pertains to reality, and reality says that women are oppressed on account of their sex. And yet, the masses are attempting to shut her up to bully her into silence. They pretend to be enlightened and tolerant and refuse to admit to the reality that women like Letitia face. Once again, the West is claiming to know better than the poor African people. They claim to be enlightened. Sex does not matter, they say. You used to be so wise, not knowing that the very notion of binary sex is an artifact of Western colonization. It is inherently racist to claim that the rest of the world needed Europeans to explain how reproduction worked. That places that still see such oppression of women are like that only because they have yet to be taught that woman is merely a concept with no definition. It is demeaning, condescending, and racist to try and tell her that her experiences are incorrect and that she must censor trans women in her messaging. Never mind that trans women are not the most oppressed group. Never mind that the majority of them are middle class white men. Never mind that the rest of the world is facing a femicide epidemic. And of course, never mind that the practices that she is speaking out against don't receive nearly the same amount of attention as her declaration that her womanhood is aligned of her biological sex. I suppose uplifting black voices doesn't count the voice in question as a woman who knows that sex is real and not a construct. Recently, she has changed her Instagram profile to include Radfem in her description. 
Her most recent post as of August 11th reads, I can't count how many times I've been called transphobic for associating my womanhood to my sex. How many times I've received death threats, insults, people telling me that they will tell my management and the brands I collaborate with that I am transphobic just so I could lose everything that I've built. Refusing to call myself uterus holder, bleeding person, vagina owner made me receive hate. Saying that lesbians have the right to refuse to suck a dick made me receive hate. Speaking about abortion or period as women's issues made me receive hate. Saying that sex is the base of most women oppression made me receive hate. Refusing to put my pronouns in my bio made me receive hate. I don't relate to the concept of gender, but what is funny is that every time I tried to ask genuine questions to understand certain things about it, they told me asking this question is transphobic. You have to agree with absolutely everything without questioning a damn thing to not lose your job and reputation. And I am very tired of it. Tired of the hypocrisy, the evilness, the silencing. I come from a place where baby girls are mutilated because of the way their bodies are. Where period stigma is pretty severe. Where little girls of nine are married by force because they are girls. Where being born with a vagina can be the reason why you will not have the chance to go to school. For this, I will never ignore the importance of my sex and my woman experience. And if you think I am hateful because of that, you should reevaluate your definition of hate. Saying sex has no importance is a form of hate against many women who are killed, mutilated, assaulted. If I say I am non-binary or a man, but I keep my body, social media will ban me if I post a topless picture. Doing like the biology I have means nothing is delusional and is misogyny. Trans people deserve to exist. They deserve to be heard, but I also deserve the same thing. Honest, critical conversation deserves to happen so solutions will be found for everyone to feel good and safe. Someone's validation should never mean that I have to compromise myself. Inclusion who ignores personal boundaries, real-life traumas, is as toxic as exclusion. Well, I, for one, welcome her to our ranks. We need to amplify voices like hers because she highlights the experiences that we could all easily face. She tells us that feminism is still very much needed, that there are stories we need to hear, and perhaps most importantly of all, not to stand down. Women across the world are aware of the nature of our biological sex plays on reality. We are all facing the same fight, of being told that there is no fight, that we are wrong for centering ourselves in our activism, and it's only by giving support to one another that we can make a true difference. There is an unspoken rule that we are not to discuss topics that disproportionately or even exclusively affect women, because it might hurt a man's feelings to not be included. It is not our duty as feminists to include everyone in our activism. No. Feminism is women's liberation. By definition, men are excluded, no matter how they may identify, and I am glad to see other women willing to stand up for true intersectionality in feminism. This, dear viewers, is where we part. This is the first and what will be a series of uh, lots of posts for uh, celebration of hitting a thousand subscribers. Um, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who wished me happy birthday. And of course, if you haven't, if you are not following Tisha Kai on Instagram or TikTok, please go do so. Her work is amazing. I ordered her book, but I'm still in France, so I won't be seeing it for a bit. And I'm just honestly amazed at the fact that she's still standing up against all this hate. Because I know that plenty of women do back down under that pressure, and I can't even blame them for it because it's very hard to stand against. If you guys have any comments, questions, concerns, please leave them down in the comments down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.